Hello, welcome once again. About fuel pump issues, the most complicated ones, this is actually for a Ford. We can't overlook that sometimes fuel pump issues can also be, they also go through something called the oil pressure switch. Now for Ford, as this is the textbook, which is called Automotive Technology, and I've made so many schematics videos about these things, but I want to give you a pictorial from the from the book. So obviously this is a picture of the battery, <clears throat> and this is the positive terminal over here, which is red. We have something called, over here called the oil pressure switch. <clears throat> the oil pressure switch over here, as you can see by this black loop, there is a resistor. This, see the arrows? Like That's why I learn always to put arrows in um, my schematics, <clears throat> just like the book does. So this path over here goes through a starter relay and then to the starter from the battery. Starter relay can be computerized, which it is today, <clears throat> so therefore we have to pay attention to this. Now, a normally open switch, but now this is a fuse, so we could have 12 volts over here, and the other side will be 12 volts. Now... <clears throat> As you can see over here, through the fuse, we go through the resistor. Also, we go through the oil pressure switch in series, and then we go to the fuel pump, which probably goes to a fuel pump relay, and then to the fuel pump. So, basically what we're doing here, we're going through the fuse, through a switch, which is oil pressure switch, then to the fuel pump. So this is in series, this oil pressure is in series with the fuel pump circuit why am i referring to this let's refer to one that i had before a couple of videos ago about if you have problems with fuel pumps they don't they're not turned on the last thing in the world that you want to do is a fuel pump change right like i spe specified yesterday there could be corrosion if you have an suv or a frame vehicle or <clears throat> uh, express vans they're on a uh, frame vehicles they get corroded the fuel lines get corroded Sometimes the fuel tanks, the straps, hard to hard job to get it off without making more destruction. So the last thing we want to do, let's refer to the book, which is one that I made so many videos about fuel pumps, but let's refer to something more easier because let's say the problem was where a, a viewer said the fuel pump was changed, relay was changed computer was changed many things were changed we have to understand what's going on over here now this is the diagram of the ecm part of the ecm which is the computer module as i specified before the computer has the power to give a relay 12 volts or ground okay now the coil part of it the control side of it is the coil over here the load side over here is the switch that's switching. Let's go over the terminals. This is terminal B1 from the computer. This is terminal C16, which goes to 12 volts. So 12 volt line comes from B1, and it comes from C16, follow the green one. Another terminal from the computer board, A1. A1 gives 12 volts to which side? The control side, which is C. That other 12 volts through this one goes to the load side, which is E. So E is this one. C is this one through A1. A12 gives what? A12 gives, right here it gives, the, uh, uh, the, the ground. You have a physical ground. This is actually the connector of an eng uh, engine ground. Or this is also the computer ground over here. Now... Remember before I just said two minutes ago, I said Ford likes to go through the oil pressure switch. So if the oil pressure, once you crank and the, and the oil pressure starts producing, right? To, when, it, when it gets to a significant amount of pressure, then the fuel pump turns on. That was this diagram that we saw before. So once this reaches proper oil pressure, then the fuel pump will start turning. Because when you, st when you start the car, Right, you're cranking the engine, right? It, the, the toughest part of the car is when you start it up to get the oil pressure and to get the oil up the galleries up to the camshaft and other 
galleries, obviously. So this one over here, once you develop oil pressure over here, this switch closes. Now, let's go over first this part again. This is the, this is the confusing part. Let's take a regular circuit. You have a problem with a fuel pump. You think the fuel pump is not being is not turned on. No fuel pressure or low fuel pressure. You think it's from the electric part of the circuit. You think it's the relay part of it. Or you think it's the computer. Or you think it's the fuse. Or you think it's the oil pressure switch. Okay. First thing is first. What do we start with? We start with a computer that gives 12 volts. Okay. Why do I have to start with the computer 12 volts? Because when I go to the diagram, the only thing that's feeding this part of it, which needs it, is through the computer. There is no other line going through 12 volts from the battery. You see this? Battery junction block. This is not going to this side of it. This side of it is connected to what? A computer. So you know this relay is what? Being controlled by a computer. Okay, when it decides to give it 12 volts. Sometimes it gives it ground. In this case, it's giving it 12 volts. We have a physical ground, but we also have a ground through the computer. We have 12 volts and a ground. Remember, this is a textbook, not original, not original uh, um, schematic. So 12 volts first we need where? At, at terminal C, coming from where? A1. So we have 12 volts. We need ground, <clears throat> we need ground, so we have a ground through the engine ground, which is what terminal? B. So 12 volts here, and how much over here? Zero volts. All the voltage is being across this coil. Fine. This is activated. What's going to happen to this switch? This switch is going to be flipped to this position. So now this is from E is connected to where? To A. E is connected to A. What does that allow us to do? Current can flow, not voltage, current flows. Current flows from the computer, 12 volts, through here, through E, comes to this point and say, can I go further down? Can I go further to find my path that I need, a complete path? The switch is closed, the contacts, I can continue. Current goes, goes into the relay, comes out terminal A. Then was it, where does it go to? It goes to the fuel pump. So right here we have 12 volts. 12 volts here. At this point you see 12 volts. And right over here 12 volts. Okay. So the only thing that has 0 volts is the ground side of this. 12 volts on this side. C. 0 volts here. 12 volts on the load side. 12 volts on the other side. And we need 12 volts to this fuel pump and then zero volts. Now, why did I talk about oil pressure switch? Let's say there's a problem. Let's say this relay does not come on. It senses, the computer senses that the fuel pump is not working. Okay? How does it know? Voltage monitor. What is it looking for? It's looking for 12 volts at this point. If it does not get 12 volts to this fuel pump, the computer says, uh-oh, there's a problem. The fuel pump is not being turned on. How does it know? It measures pressure. It don't have to measure pressure. Once it sees there's no 12 volts to the fuel pump, it is impossible to have pressure. It is impossible to get the fuel pump activated, turning, creating pressure. This is the main point that's why I learned in electronics, if you see every video that I make, what point do I go through? I go to 87. I always go to the output of this to detect if this relay is working. Where did I learn this from? I learned it from the textbook. Like I said so many times, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, we did not have YouTube. We did not have Scanner Danner, which is the best. We use the best in electronics. We did not have this. I had to learn everything from textbook. Even the teachers themselves in electronics... They were really not that good in school uh, in electronics. So, unfortunately, but I had to learn on my own because I, I was an electronic technician before I was an automotive technician. It helped me a lot. How does it monitor? This point A has to be 12 volts. If it doesn't get 12 volts, it gets zero volts. Let's put this in a square. If it 
sees zero volts here, it knows this fuel pump is not being turned on. What do you think it's doing? This oil pressure switch is in parallel with this fuel pump relay. What does that mean when two things are in parallel? That means if this is not working, if this branch is not working, I have a different branch for current to flow. This oil pressure switch is what? In series also with the fuel pump. And that's why I started this video 10 minutes ago. This switch is in series with the fuel pump. This oil pressure switch is in series with the fuel pump, but in parallel with the relay. So what do you think is going to happen? Zero volts, the computer, computer says, uh-oh, fuel pump is not running. How, how can I get it to run? Let's give 12 volts to what? The oil pressure switch. Oil pressure switch closes. When enough oil pressure is, cr is created, guess what? Boom. Now follow the red line to the green. And now the fuel pump will get what? 12 volts here. 12 volts here. And 12 volts to what? The fuel pump. So there's another path for the fuel pump to be turned on if this fails this fails it's out of the picture computer says uh oh we got problems no fuel pump no fuel to the injectors we got problems how can we solve that problem oil pressure switch just like i showed you before by ford okay so keep in mind if you have sometimes problems with fuel pump sometimes there might be a problem with the oil pressure switch if it goes through that sometimes if there's an accident sometimes they want the, the the they want the oil pressure switch to be activated to avoid the lines the 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 gas lines uh to leak gasoline to go through a different circuit in a different way now 12 volts from the fuse now mentioning about a, a specific uh, of uh, a customer when i said you, if you notice, I always try to answer people's questions. It's hard because I'm not diagnosing at the location. So I rely on information from the viewer or the comments of, of people. As you can see, I do answer the comments. If I ask the person and he says many things will change, I understand that. And I say, how much did you measure at the relay? 12 volts at the relay. Let's say terminal E. He says, I measured 12 volts. Or there's no power from the relay. How do you know that? Well, I went to the fuse and I measured 12 volts. Just because you measure 12 volts over here, does that mean there's 12 volts over here? Let's say this is broken. This wire is hard wire, right? Hard wiring breaks. So let's say this breaks. So I can have 12 volts over here at this side. Why? Because it's still connected to battery plus 12 volts. 12 volts here. The fuse is good. I can have 12 volts. But I might actually have what over here? Zero volts. But he wouldn't know that because he measured 12 volts over here thinking that this is also 12 volts. Always go to the terminal of the relay. This is hard wiring. That's why I made a video. If you go to type in Joe Electronic Schematic Photo, I made a specific video how to measure terminals with the relay inserted, not taken out. There is no purpose for that. How to measure the relay 12 volts. When I ask questions, I, I rely on people that they measure voltages. This is not visual. Electronics is not visual, as you see. It's not brakes, bad pads, or leaks, or things like that. You have to measure voltages, and I need voltages measured to tell me what's going on. This is why electronics is different from mechanical. You will not see, with, like I said, Scan and Dana, which is the best electronics teacher in automotive electronics, he will not diagnose a vehicle without measuring voltages or putting a scanner on. Uh, obviously, myself, not all either. This requires measurements, and that's why I need measurements from the customers, measurements from the comments or emails telling me I measure 12 volts here and I measure zero volts over here. N you not saying, well, I didn't hear the relay clicking. That's not good enough. Or I didn't, I don't think that I didn't hear, I didn't hear the fuel pump being turned on. Remember, sometimes there is a safety issue for these type of vehicles. So therefore, if, there's a, if there is a problem, like I said, it might shut down one system and allow the fuel to go through another system. Sometimes there is in the Fords, there is an inertia switch, as you know, which shuts off the fuel. So that, so when an accident happens, you don't want any fuel. It shuts it off. So be mindful of those things. Please go to my channel where you'll see testing the relays in circuit. Thanks for watching. Joe Electronics Schematic for Auto.